Neil needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Neil made Blockly, uh, and uh, so founded the team, and then passed it off to the rest of us. Um, he also has a wonderful Blockenspiel that is out in the hallway. Um, and he has a lot of the history of what's happened with Blockly and a lot of the reasons for every single thing that's somewhere deep in the code base hidden in his head. So go for it, Neil. Thank you. Um, I have been asked uh, today to talk about uh, generators. Um, Blockly's code generators are uh, probably well known to most of you. We've got five of them, uh, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Lua, Dart. Um, who here has written a generator function for a new block? I'm more interested in the fact that some people have not raised their hands. <laughs> and um, more interestingly, uh, who here has written a JavaScript generator for a new language? What? Tell us about your language. Well, we have, in Appometer, we have Yale, which is effectively Scheme with its own set of macros to make Appometer Awesome. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to be one that we'll add into core. <laughs> Great. Um, so generators can also be run headlessly. Um, and we've got a demo for that. So you've got uh, JSON on the left-hand side. Uh, there's a uh, generate button. And you get code on the right. Um, today, I'm excited to uh, show a new um, uh, headless uh, generator demo. Uh, in here, we've got uh, JSON on the left-hand side. Uh, you click the Generate button, and you get code on the right. Uh, now, for those of you um, watching virtually, um, I should let you know that uh, the reaction here was thunderous applause to this new demo. <laughs> let me show you why that thunderous applause was warranted. Uh, so here's our existing demo, and zoom in. So the way this works is um, we create a, a workspace. It's headless. Uh, we then populate that workspace full of blocks using uh, serialization. And then we render that workspace into uh, a language, in this case, Python. Uh, and to do that, we need uh, all of Blockly. Uh, we need the block definitions for all the blocks that are required. Uh, we need the Python generator and the Python generator functions for all the blocks. And we also need the user language. Why do we need the user's language? Well, keep that in mind. We'll come back to that. Now, let's have a look at what this demo uses. Uh, find the line. Here it is. Uh, we take the JSON, and we get code. OK, so maybe that's just wrapping the previous three lines in a helper function. Not really. Let's have a look at what's imported. And oh, there it is. We import the uh, core JavaScript generator um, and the JavaScript generators for each of the blocks. Note that we're not importing Blockly. This is actually not Blockly here at all. This is uh, from JSON to code without going through the Blockly uh, API and uh, object model. Um, so. This leads us to an interesting question, a trivia question that's open to everybody, um, including the uh, Blockly team. Uh, can you identify a case where the user's language, English, German, whatever, can affect generated code? I'll make it more worth your while. <laughs> Anybody? I can invent one. <laughs> it has to do with comments. Okay. 
here it is, it's out of order. If we have comments in nested blocks and we generate code, it sequences the comments one after another. See the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, actually, no. Not right to left. That's not the issue. No. No. OK, let's switch to German. Uh, and sorry, we should probably work on our uh, uh, comment placement. But uh, In German, the word order and thus the uh, input order has reversed. And so now, when you ge generate, you end up with main comment, second subcomment, then first subcomment. Um, so that's one reason why we really shouldn't be loading the, uh, uh, the user's language when generating code. Uh, it's, uh, it will lead you down the wrong path. Um, OK, so it's much simpler to generate straight from the save file format rather than through Blockly's own model. Uh, the obvious question is, why did we do it this way in the first place? Well, I looked through my personal archive and found uh, a snapshot of Blockly from March 20, 20, uh, 2012. Uh, this is a fully functional version of Blockly. This is a few months before it was released for the first time. Uh, we can create blocks. Uh, there's no toolbox yet, but you know, we'll get there. Um, and we can generate JavaScript. There it is. What's missing, though, we, can't, we don't have a save file format. Yeah, that's right. So when the uh, generator was first created, we didn't have a save file format. And so, yeah. Uh, and creating the generator was more important than creating the save file format in order to demonstrate what Blockly could do. Uh, so yeah, that order of operations has come back to bite us. Um, so um, the other thing I'd like to point out is that uh, this input, the to code function, uh, doesn't t just take JSON. Uh, we can grab uh, XML and sorry, if I can find it, paste it in, generate. There we go. Uh, so this will take, this function takes uh, JSON, it takes serialized JSON, it takes XML, it takes serialized XML, you name it, it can handle it. Um, so what are the advantages of using this? Um, well, are we still doing bad jokes in this conference? Okay, good. Uh, so if you're headless, then it's a no-brainer. Um, one difference is that it is uh, 10 times faster to generate code without round tripping it through, uh, through the Blockly object model. Um, it's also 1 100th the size in terms of code, code size. Um, and it has 700 times fewer dependencies. So it's a significant simplification. Um, if you're not running headless, um, it's still smaller and faster, but uh, the differences are not as extreme. Uh, the main advantage is uh, the API. So when you're generating, when you're creating a generator function in Blockly, um, we, uh, where is it here? There we go. Our API is vast. And there are generator functions that wander all the way through the, uh, our API in order to pull out obscure information to find other blocks and relationships and so on. Um, this is uh, somewhat different here. Uh, the new generators uh, here have got uh, 12 properties and approximately 12 methods. That's it. We don't need anything more than that um, because it's optimized specifically for generating. And we're handling everything from variables and uh, 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 procedures and so on. Um, and the break and continue block, which is my personal nightmare. 
Um, and the other advantage of using this API is that this won't change, whereas if you're using Blockly's API, there's constant shifting of APIs, and you're, I know that from uh, supporting Blockly games over the years. It, uh, it's fun. So uh, looking further ahead, if these generators um, are popular and prove themselves, uh, then the Blockly team has the option to deprecate the existing in-core model of uh, generators. And that will have significant implications. Um, so the first thing that would, that would happen is we could get rid of 40,000 lines of code. Um, and then after that, um, there would no longer be a need for headless mode. And headless mode in Blockly has been a continual source of errors and uh, type issues and so on. Uh, that seems to be the gift that's never ending. Uh, and this could end that, so that you don't have to worry about it. Um, and then the other uh, advantage for the Blockly uh, uh, core is that the um, name and the variable databases are currently doing double duty. They're currently keeping track of uh, all the entities on the workspace as well as keeping track of uh, entities possibly named differently during code generation. And splitting those into two separate uh, sections is, uh, makes for significant uh, uh, simplifications. Uh, most of the work on these generators was dealing with name and uh, variable uh, databases. Uh, it was actually not the generators. Those were the easy ones. So um, lastly, um, I also hope that these new generators, um, the structure of them, I hope that the structure can provide a demonstration that um, even in the year 2023, web development uh, can still be, well, it doesn't have to be hell. Um, we don't need hundreds of dependencies in order to do simple things. We don't need a tool chain that is so complex that it's non-deterministic. Um, I think this uh, project demonstrates that software engineering can be fun, even today. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? I'll just ask a question about performance. So have you actually measured, for example, taking the Blockly model and turning it back into um, the serialization to run it through the generators versus just taking the Blockly model and running it through the current generators to see how the performance differs? Yes. Uh, so I gave numbers for the headless. I did not give numbers for the non-headless because that's still in a state of flux, and I still have uh, some significant optimizations which I can make. So I don't want to commit to hard numbers on your question. It's an excellent question, though. All right. Thank you. Have some money. Ha, 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 ha.